action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with another TNI news video. Now, to be honest, I wasn't really planning on doing yet another news video right away uh, this week. You know, I probably was going to do one on Friday after the events of the Fan Expo in Canada. Hasbro is definitely going to be revealing some new stuff there, so I was going to do a video then. But as it is, you know, since yesterday, since I did my last news video, there's been quite a bit of uh, breaking news items that I wanted to share with you guys. So instead of doing what I had originally planned, which was to finish up my reviews of the DC Multiverse Wave with the Killer Croc figure, which hopefully I will get up tomorrow, I decided I want to go in and shoot another news video. Now before we get into the news, uh, just my normal update that we've got those contests, the two different contests, one on Marvelous News and one on Toy News International, where we're giving away a hundred dollars store credit to Big Bad Toy Store. It's a hundred dollars store credit for each contest, so up to two hundred dollars worth. And uh, contest details are in the video description below. Okay, so getting into the news. So, and some of this I'm going to try and go over pretty fast, um, just because I don't want this video to be super long. And others I'm going to go into more detail. So, real quick, uh, just yesterday it was reported that a fourth Matrix movie has been greenlit. It's going to have Alana uh, Wachowski. Uh, directing and Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss are set to reprise their roles in that movie. Now, for me, I love the first Matrix movie. The second two were okay and it did come to a conclusion. I don't think a fourth is needed, but you know, we can never let anything die, right? So, there is a fourth Matrix movie coming. And then in other movie news real quick, the newest James Bond movie, the 25th James Bond movie, has received a title and release date. So this movie, which is going to see a return of Daniel Craig in the role of James Bond, is going to be called, uh, the official title is No Time to Die. And the movie is going to be released on April 3rd, 2020. So you've got a little less than a year till the next James Bond movie. I think this will be the last movie for Daniel Craig. Uh, a lot of uh, debate and rumors and stuff on who's going to be the next James Bond, which I'm not even going to go to in, in this video. But I just wanted to let you guys know, for you guys who like the franchise, which I'm a, I'm a fan. I like most of the James Bond movies, so I'll probably be checking that one out. Okay, I have one more bit of movie news, but I'm going to wait to get into that one, which is actually an update to my story from yesterday about the whole Spider-Man mess between Sony and Disney. But let's get into some toy news first. And first of all, SH Figure Arts or Tomasi Nations has released an updated image and some information for their uh, Dragon Ball Teo Pai Pai, I think that's how you pronounce his name. If I if I mispronounced it or butchered it, I do apologize. But I have talked about this figure. We've seen uh, this figure on display. It was on display at the unboxing convention a couple weeks ago, and they released one official image. Well, now they've released a second official image for the figure, and they've given it a release date. I don't think we had a release date on it before, but it is going to be released in February 2020. It's going to come with three facial expressions, and then it's also going to have a, a pillar that will allow you to pose the figure in various positions. A, a big log, pink log uh, based on the image, it looks like. So uh, I just wanted to share that information with you guys who are into the SH figure. It's Dragon Ball line. And then we also, we've got big news from Hasbro. Well, big news and little news. So first, uh, the little news, and that is Hasbro yesterday announced that they are going to be getting rid of plastic in their packaging. So uh, that, that means... I don't know exactly what that means other than we should be seeing some drastic changes starting next year in all the different uh, lines that Hasbro does. Now, they didn't specifically announce their in their press release Marvel and Star Wars, but again, I've got to assume this is going to go for all their brands that they put out. So, you know, Marvel, that probably means we're going to see a, 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 some kind of change on the Marvel Legend packaging, Black Series, and all that stuff. No other details at this time other than they're basically, you know, trying to be more environmentally sound and safe and friendly, and they're getting rid of plastic in the packaging. Just the packaging, not the action figures those will still have plastic on them. And then for the big news from Hasbro, today they announced that they are going to be assuming the global master toy license for Ghostbusters starting in 2020. So uh, Mattel was the previous one to have that license. Before that, it was Kenner. And Kenner was really the one that did good things with that license. You know, they put out a ton of toys back in the day. And of course, Hasbro now owns Kenner. So it's kind of like the Ghostbusters license is returning home in, in a way. 
and no no specifics or anything about what kind of product they're going to be doing there's the new movie coming out next year as well so you know that's probably the real uh enticing thing that got made them go get that license and you know it, it was to me i was kind of you know expecting this mainly because we've seen two different transformer mashup toys with ghostbusters in recent days with the Ecto-1 that transforms and then the Masterpiece Prime that's decked out in the Ghostbuster colors with the Slimer and everything that was done as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. So again, I was kind of expecting this. And then what, you know, when it didn't get announced at San Diego, that's when I would have figured they would have announced this. I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm wrong, you know. But, you know, now here it is. Here's the official announcement. So again, that's uh, coming in 2020. If you're a Ghostbusters fan, then, then get ready for Hasbro because who knows, you know, Hopefully we'll get some six inch figures, Marvel Legends style Ghostbusters. Yeah. NECA Toys today has now finally fully revealed their second New York Comic Con Dark Horse versus uh, DC Comics set. So they released official images the other day of the first, set, which we already knew about, the Alien versus the Joker Alien versus the Batman figure, which I've previously talked about. And then they teased the Predator figure in this set. So we pretty much knew what the Predator figure was going to be, though now we're getting a much better look at that. And then the second figure is, in fact, a Green Lantern figure. And not one, but two versions of Green Lantern. So we're getting Hal Jordan. And then they've included an alternate Jon Stewart head. So you can have a Jon Stewart Green Lantern as well. So that's pretty cool that they did that. You know, he's got the gloves and everything on. So, you know, you can't really tell the difference. And I think build-wise, Stewart and, and Jordan are pretty close to the same. Maybe not 100%, but good enough. But the downside here, of course, is, you know, this is a two-pack, which is expensive. You'd have to buy two of them if you wanted both of, uh, you know, have both characters on your shelf. And then, of course, it's a New York Comic Con exclusive, which means it's going to be even harder to get. So, you know, I don't know how many people are actually going to be able to track down two of these. But as it is, you know, it's kind of cool accessory. They also have, you know, some ring effects that you can put on the hands. You get an alternate hand. You get the uh, lantern and stuff with the Predator. He's got a, a masked and unmasked head skull multiple hands and he's got some yellow lantern type effects with his weapons you know he he's a yellow lantern so um i guess he conjures up his traditional predator style weapons but now they're done in the translucent yellow to look like you know the the green lantern or yellow lantern effect so that's kind of cool and uh, as far as actual details on on pricing though i'm sure they're going to be the same price as the ones you know the two sets that they sold at san diego which i think off the top of my head that was fifty dollars um, I won't swear to it, but I think it was like $50 that the San Diego Comic-Con set sold for. And those details, and then they should, like with the San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, you know, they should make a limited number available on their website for you guys to, you know, who aren't going to the convention to be able to try and buy. And those details should be coming, I believe, later this week. So stay tuned for that. We'll have those details up on Toy News International. And of course, you know, if you follow NECA or, or what have you, they'll, they'll post those details online as well. Okay, now these last two bits of news I have for you are essentially updates to the two stories I talked about yesterday. So first of all, we have, uh, in regards to that Incredible Hulk Marvel Legend figure, the Grey Hulk that showed up on the Amazon Mexico website yesterday, you know, it sold out in like minutes, but a few people were able to actually purchase it. And thanks to Eduardo, who was one of those lucky people and actually got his figure delivered today and has it in hand, he snapped some pictures of the figure for us. And if you want to check them out in greater detail, we have those up on Marvelous News. But again, that figure has actually, if you were one of the few people who were able to get it off of the Amazon Mexico site, it looks like it is actually shipping. Now for the rest of us, I am still waiting for 100% confirmation from like Hasbro, but everything I've been told you know, says that this will be available online at other places beyond just Amazon. Amazon should be carrying this even here in the United States, but this is essentially going to be, you know, available at places like the Big Bad Toy Stores and, and everywhere else that, that, that pretty much covers Marvel Legends. I don't know if technically it's a fan channel exclusive since places like Amazon are carrying it, but, uh, essentially it's going to be available online now exactly when it's going to go up online like here in the u.s and 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 be available that i don't know yet um, those are details I, i'm still waiting on hearing but hopefully that information will be coming pretty soon if not you know if i don't get that information then hopefully maybe hasbro will make an announcement 
at the uh, uh, unbox or not unboxing, but the uh, Fan Expo in Canada this coming weekend. And just a reminder that that is this weekend. Hasbro's going to be there. They're going to have panels for Marvel, Star Wars, and Transformers. All three panels are going to be on Friday. So do you know check Marvelous News for the latest updates on those. I don't really expect anything on Star Wars, but I do expect some reveals for for Marvel Legends and probably some reveals for Transformers. Oh, also one other quick update. Hasbro today released a new video showing the transformation process of their Unicron figure. So, you know, again, it's looking iffy if this thing's actually going to make the 8,000 backers that it's needing. We're under two weeks and they're still under 3,000 backers. But they did, you know, if you've been wondering how this thing is actually going to transform, they have now released this video, which is pretty cool. And, you know, like I said, if you want to get, I mean, I would, if you're going to get it, if, assuming you have the money now, I'd go on and place the order just because, like I said, I'm sure there's going to be people who are like, if they're waiting and they like see, you know, last couple of days and it's still not even, we're close to 8,000, they're not even going to bother because they're going to be like, yeah, there's no way this is going to go through. So if you are going to get it and let, you know, if you're holding off because you're saving up the money, I mean, that's completely understandable. But if you're just, futzing around because you haven't gotten around to it i'd go on and order it if, assuming you actually want it i'm not trying to pressure you into getting if you don't want it or what have you don't get it you know don't think you have to get it if you're a transformer fan just so it'll go through i wouldn't worry about that but if you want it and you've got the money i'd go on and 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 you haven't already i'd go on and order it just so you know try and get that counter up so it has some remote chance of of getting to the eight eight thousand backers that they're needing by the end of this month <music>
now for the final bit of news, which again is an update from a story I talked about yesterday, and it's in regards to the whole Spider-Man, Sony, Disney mess. So since yesterday, and if you've been living in a box or something and you're not aware, yesterday news broke that negotiations between Disney and Sony had broken down to broker a new deal that would allow uh, Spider-Man to be featured in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that unless something happens and changes and a new deal is struck, Spider-Man will no longer be appearing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And then uh, Marvel, specifically uh, Kevin Feige, the studio president of Marvel, will no longer be uh, giving his input into uh, the creative input into uh, the Spider-Man movies for Sony. Now... Since yesterday, and it was it basically based on the report initially put out by Deadline, uh, it stated that negotiations essentially broke down because Disney wanted a 50-50 co-financing arrangement between the studios uh, and possibly from other non-Spider-Man but Spider-Man universe movies like the Venom movies and the, and the Morbius movie and stuff like that. And so Sony said no and they walked away. Now, since then, Sony has come out officially on their Twitter account and and given a response to all of this. Because a lot of people were blaming Sony because they had walked away and didn't take Disney up on their offer. And so Sony, you know, I don't know who initially leaked the information, whether it was Sony or Disney. I feel like all of this is playing out in the media because one or both companies are trying to use this as a negotiating tactic, using public pressure and stuff to, you know, get the other side to come to a, an agreeable term. But as it is, Sony has now come out with an official statement. Okay, so before I share my thoughts on what Sony said, let me read the actual tweet so you, if you haven't read them yourself, you can actually see them. I'll, I'll put them up on the screen here and, and read it. So it's three different tweets. And the first tweet is, Much of today's news about Spider-Man has been mischaracterized. Recent discussions about Kevin Feige's involvement in the franchise. We are disappointed but respect Disney's decision not to have him continue as a lead producer on our next live-action Spider-Man film. So essentially they're saying uh, Disney has pulled Feige from, from being able to participate in the creative process of the next Spider-Man movie, and they respect that decision. Then they go on to say, we hope, this might, we hope this might change in the future, but understand that many new responsibilities that Disney has given him, including all their newly added Marvel properties, do not allow time for him to work on an IP they do not own. So here they seem to be indicating when they're talking about these new properties, uh, essentially the recent Fox acquisitions of the X-Men and Fantastic Four. They're basically saying that Feige doesn't have time to work on Spider-Man, which is not owned directly by Disney because he's focusing on these new properties. So they're essentially casting the blame on Disney saying, you know, he's too busy to come over and work with us and on Spider-Man. So that's why we're, we're going our separate ways. Uh, and then the third tweet is, Kevin is terrific and we are grateful for, this, for his help and guidance and appreciate the path he has helped put us on, which we will continue. Now, <laughs> that's basically after throwing him under the bus, saying it's pretty much his fault because he's too busy to work on these other properties. Now they're like trying to ask us. I don't know. But again, that seems to be the crux of what they're saying is that Feige is too busy now to work on Spider-Man and that's why he's no longer going to be involved. But I don't necessarily buy that. Again, I, I think this is over money. Now, who's really at fault here? You know, it's hard to say. I, I feel like Disney's initial, if what has been reported is true, I feel like Disney's initial uh, offer was a little over the top. But certainly Sony could have, you know, come back with a counter offer or, you know, tried to work out something instead of just walking away. Now, you know, in negotiations, especially if the first uh, side comes out with something way over the top, you know, the, the act of walking away can be a negotiating tactic. Just because they walk away doesn't mean that necessarily they can't be brought back to the table. And in fact, here we see an opening saying that, you know, maybe things will change. So they're actually, you know, kind of giving Disney an opening, I guess, here to uh, pick up the negotiations. But let's for a minute here go with the assumption that nothing's going to change here, that these two parties can't come to an agreement. Um, you know, Spider-Man just made the largest uh, box office take for, for the company in its history, and they're not going to give it up no matter what, and they don't want to split half of the profits and, and probably tired of, of Disney getting all the credit. Though, you know, I mean, 
I'll give credit where credit is due. The first two original Spider-Man movies were great. And in fact, probably, you know, we can credit those two movies as being in large part where we are today with superhero movies. You know, they were really kind of the groundbreakers um, on these. Them and Fox, again, Fox deserving credit where credit's due with the first two X-Men movies. Blade also deserve, you know, the original Blade movies also deserve some credit in that. But those are the movies that really kind of opened up the doors to get us where we are today with the Marvel, whole Marvel Cinematic Universe and the um, in superhero movies in general. So credit where credit's due. But ever since those first two Sony Spider-Man movies, everything else Sony has put out regarding Spider-Man has been utter crap. Spider-Man 3, utter crap. The two Andrew Garfield movies, utter crap. So, you know, I don't think it's realistic to expect that all of a sudden if, if Sony goes back on its own that they're going to be able to really uh, do it right. And I, okay, I'm going to be completely honest here. The last movie, Far From Home, while not a bad movie, I don't think was a great movie either. I think people, and I think the reason why people tune into these movies, you know, there's a lot of Marvel movies that aren't really as good as maybe they're hyped up to be. There are definitely some awesome Marvel movies, don't get me wrong, and I love the overall property. But the way I see it is a lot of these movies that have been put out by, you know, Sony with these Spider-Man movies. I mean, I did really like the first Homecoming movie, but I did not. I was not nearly as big a fan of Far From Home as I was of, of the first movie. But to me, the reason why I was still tuning into this movie no matter what is I wanted to see the next piece of the big overall puzzle of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think with a lot of these movies, there are a lot, you know, characters that in the comic can barely hold on or not even hold on to their own ongoing series for any period of time. Doctor Strange, I put in that category. Uh, Black Panther, I put in that category. I mean, they've been characters that have been around a long time and will periodically per pop up with series, but they never last. I mean, of course, in today's day and age, no comic really lasts. They're always relaunching stuff. But even back in the day when comics used to actually go for a long period of time, most of a lot of these characters just, you know, they, they, did, they weren't strong enough to hold their own comics for any long period of time. And so I, my feeling is that these movies do as well as they do in large part because we're tuning in to see the next piece of the puzzle of the much larger picture of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, and, you know, of course the build up up until just now, it was Avengers Endgame. And, you know, so we were all tuning in to see the next piece of the puzzle of the Avengers Endgame. And honestly, I feel like, you know, now Marvel or Disney and Marvel have their work cut out for them because now they're starting over. They're going to have to try and repeat the success they had with Avengers in the Endgame and do it again. And hopefully they can do it, but I don't think that's even guaranteed that they can do it. Certainly this next slate of movies that they announced recently at San Diego, I don't find nearly as, per, at least personally, I don't find nearly as exciting as what we'd seen before. The fact that they killed Iron Man off, the fact that they made Captain America a really old guy, you know, and essentially put him out to pasture, uh, you know, and now we're losing Spider-Man. You know, I don't think Disney is in as strong a position as, as it might seem. So... You know, I, again, I, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that, that Feige can do it again and get us to a point where we're starting to incorporate the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. I think that will be a really exciting time. But I really feel like, you know, they've got their work cut out for them and this whole Spider-Man thing isn't going to help. And Sony, you know, like I said, they have not done anything remotely decent with Spider-Man since the original two movies and... And nobody has faith that they're going to be able to do anything good with these characters. And, you know, Venom was not good. It was not a good movie. It wasn't a horrible movie. It could have been far worse, but it was not a good movie. It was not a great movie in any way. I don't expect a Morbius movie to be all that good. And uh, and same thing with Black Cat and, and Silver Sable. Sorry, just not really. I mean, I think that got tabled anyway. But uh, it's just, it's like, come on. So this is my this is my solution to the problem. And I know they're not going to do it, but this is the this is where I see a win-win for everybody. Disney, get your checkbook out. Sony, just accept that you can't do what Marvel does with their characters. You can't create the kind of universe that they do. So your two choices are either to work with Disney, which means you're essentially going to have to split half your profits of everything you do. And essentially, any success is going to be accredited to Marvel, not you, and or sell Spider-Man back to Marvel. 
let Disney pay you a shit ton of money, which, I mean, Spider-Man is at an all-time high. I view it like the stock market. You know, you came in when Marvel was at an all-time low. You know, they declared bankruptcy and all this, and you swooped in and, and picked up the stock at a really cheap price. Now it's at an all-time high. Superhero movies are an all-time high. Your last Spider-Man movie was your biggest box office take. So go to Disney make them give you an offer that's like incredibly large and i'm willing to bet if they can get spider-man the most popular character in the marvel universe back in house they will pay you then you can take that money and either give your stockholders a big bonus or use it to invest in creating something unique and original that is good and is actually yours but give it back to don't try and go it alone Give it back to Disney. You know, don't pull a fox and I'm not saying don't, you know, sell the entire company to Disney, but sell Spider-Man back. Sell him at a premium while he's at an all time high. Don't wait till the bubble bursts and these, you know, you've run Spider-Man into the ground. Do it now. Get a ton of money and everybody can walk away happy here. That's the way I see it. Again, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but but that's how that's the solution that I think everybody would be happy with. So um, that's my two cents. Love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, one other thing on this um, that's a question that's come up for us action figure collectors is what is this going to do? Assuming, again, that nothing, you know, Sony goes its own way and this things aren't negotiate, renegotiated and stuff. What is this going to mean for Spider-Man toys? So technically, you know, Hasbro will give us the same answer they used to give us with Fox and X-Men. They can do whatever characters they want. The license that they have allows them to do any Spider-Man character. But we knew, you know, I think all of us pretty much knew, regardless of that tagline that Hasbro would always tell us, there was internal workings going on where they knew if they put out, if they did anything that really promoted the Fox X-Men movies um, when they were having their tiffs and stuff, that, that Disney would not be happy. And you don't want to make the license holder of your one of your most popular brands unhappy, right? So my question is, are we going to see the same thing that happened with Fox and the X-Men figures now happen with Spider-Man if things don't get resolved here? Will essentially Spider-Man figures and toys go away? Now the one difference here I would say between X-Men and Spider-Man is, is that I think Spider-Man is a huge seller for Hasbro. Again, Spider-Man is like the most recognizable character in the Marvel Universe and maybe behind Superman, Batman, probably the most recognizable comic book character ever. So Spider-Man toys sell to adult collectors. Spider-Man toys sell to kids. Spider-Man toys are, you know, a, you know, they're a big deal to a company like Hasbro. So I don't know, you know, they're going to probably try and do everything they can to keep putting out Spider-Man toys. But, you know, probably my guess is we'll continue to see comic book based stuff but less likely to see any more movie stuff going forward. That that's my two cents. I you know, I don't know for sure. But again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. And that's it for today. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. And then as I always say, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't, do subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. Like the video if you're so inclined. Follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. And until next time, guys. I'll catch you later.